Do you even know you? How well do you know yourself? How well do you even know what makes you tick, how your brain works? What are things about you that matter the most that shape the way you should even shape your life? Do you even know you? I did not know myself in 2014 the way that I thought I did. And when I took a personality assessment, it completely changed not only who I am, the view that I had of of who I was, and ultimately the vision and the strategy for the life that I ultimately designed and began to live. And I'd like to share with you today all of those things that I learned and invite you to go out and get your own test and gather those insights yourself. Welcome to Build with Rob. We're back at it again, living life to the fullest, continually getting better in any way, shape, or form that we can till the day we die. Because what are we? We're just, uh, you know, these complex machines that we're just trying to move to more complexity so that our output can be higher with less effort. That's what the whole philosophy is all about. Um, that's what the show is about. And, and what I like to, of course, do is share uh, different things that I've experienced along my journey in developing the philosophy and living it on an ongoing basis. And I know so many of you heard me talk about uh, the, the importance of taking a personality a test or an assessment about yourself. And, and I wanted to share a couple uh, that I took that, that really changed the path and the direction of how I ended up designing both the Deer Deck machine and ultimately even my life. Um, because I didn't fully understand who I was, even though, you know, I was 38, 39 years old. And of course, I thought I understood exactly who I was. You're deep 30s. You, ain't, you don't know who you are by then. What are you even, what are you even up to? I'll tell you what you're up to. You're trying a million different things, hoping one thing's going to work, going in a million different directions, trying to do everything you possibly can, hoping that one of those is going to be the thing that makes you happy. That's somebody that does not fully understand themselves. That is somebody that's out there trying to like hustle their way into like a life lottery ticket. Like, man, put in the energy, let your soul be sucked all the way out of you and then try to fight for it to get back in and hope that somehow that produces some sort of significant life moment that makes everything great. That's what I went for. And it didn't work. It didn't work. It was just, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. When I think about myself in 2014, I just, I... I feel like my entire body's like spread open, being pulled in a million directions. And I'm just every muscle in my body is squeezed as tight as possible. That's like how I picture myself versus in 2023 where I got them ooey gooey Tom Brady muscles. You know what I mean? Where I feel like I'm just barely even like existing in the world that you know it. I'm just sort of floating through space and time, enjoying every moment of it. Much different experience, but it it started with getting a much deeper understanding of who I was, and and I never thought about it. It was never something I ever considered. No one had ever mentioned it to me, and, you know, the great Chris Smith um, from Arrive Consulting, who I had hired at the time to help me begin to develop the vision for the machine and everything that I needed to do was felt that it was really important in taking this innovative personality test called Insights Discovery. Uh, which essentially gives you a much deeper look into who you are and gave gives you insight into how your personality works and your strengths and weaknesses so that you can understand um, how to build the you know in this particular case the company around me how to you know get clarity on what I wanted to do inside the vision uh, for the Deerdick machine at that time. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, was it insightful. December 12th, 2014 changed my life forever because it it is when I finally got a look at who I really am 
through taking a personality test and then getting the results and giving me the insights so that finally I was looking at not what I thought I was, but who I actually was, and then getting that information and the awareness to know what I needed to change, what I needed to look out for, and ultimately you know, what I needed to consider moving forward if I wanted to uh, be a more productive, happy uh, human being. And, And there's so much interesting stuff from the initial one in 2014 that I, that I want to share and, and what I learned and the changes that I made. And then I want to share a more recent one that I'm, that I'm, uh, took that's called Project Evo, which is a, Uh, test about how your mind works to give you insight to how your mind actually operates when you're uh, thinking about doing different projects or, or how you're organizing and planning your life as a whole. And again, it's just giving you more information so that you can design a strategy for a way of living and a way of being that's more natural to who you actually are, which in turn makes it easier to execute and more fulfilling and leads to you being actually happy. Because we tend to get caught up in thinking like like we know exactly who we are and keep running into the same problems, thinking if if some outside force or some if if it just becomes successful or this happens or that happens, that that I won't feel that way anymore. When the fact is is just who you are and how you're designed does not fit with the way you've designed your strategy. And you know the the. The very first thing when 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 the insights profile kicks off and it, look insights discovery is so hardcore. It's like when you read it for the first time, it feels like somebody followed you for a year and they're just calling you Rob and Rob does this and Rob does that. It's like, OK, you know me. And I didn't even, you're right, I am like that. I didn't realize that. But here's the other thing about it, too, is it also will validate the good things about you. You know, it's it's not all about just like getting the assessment and being like, oh, I, oh, I didn't realize that was my problem. It's not about that. It's it's about understanding and giving you the validation on the stuff that you are strong at, your strengths, like the way that you actually are, and you can connect it back to the things that worked best for you, and you'll see that like, okay, that makes a ton of sense. Um, I need to do more of that. Oh, and I understand that weakness. Like, that is me. I need to stop doing that. Let let me share with you a couple of these. You know, this starts off with, you know, Rob likes to make things happen and drive everything around him. He may, in reality, be less competent at a specific task than his confident style indicates. This hit me right across the face, right out the gate. (laughs) Hit me right across the face, right out the gate, because it's... Man, I'm like, God, that's so true. Like, I will, you know, I'll step into a situation and speak confidently about something I sort of know. You know what I mean? Just in an effort to keep the whole thing moving and keep the vision pushing, you know? And and for me, um, that was, you know, it, something that I... I almost knew I was doing subconscious, but having it be read back to me of like, this is what you do. It's like, oh man, that that is true. I, I need to be more thoughtful of it. And it just brings the awareness of like, hey, when you're, don't be so confident in the things that you don't fully understand. You need to lean on and have people around you that can help you develop the confidence through clarity and understanding rather than just continually pushing your idea forward based off of speculative understanding and confidence that you have. It just, it shifted me in an instant of something that I I needed to, to apply. It says he feels constantly drawn to beginning many different projects yet failing to complete them. He allows his energies, inspirations, and and insights to become dissipated. He has high energy, is always striking in a forward direction. He follows his impulsive impulses, moving strongly towards his goal. He he prefers to deal with a variety of situations, people, and events all at the same time. And and again, that's really validating. Like, man, I do I I do all of these different things, and so. 
instead of me, because what was I struggling with back then was like, oh, am I doing too much? Oh, I'm doing too much. And it wasn't like that I was necessarily doing too much. I needed them to be more organized and be more cohesive so that they were all serving a larger purpose, but I still got to fulfill that need to constantly be uh, trying new things and having a handful of different things going at the whole time. And when I shifted the positioning of everything I I'm doing to like, how is this affecting my overall happiness and life strategy? And how is this leading to a, a holistic, better life that now gave purpose to all these different things that I needed to do because that was what I needed from an energetic standpoint. And it gave me the insight of like, man, I really do take on a lot of things, start them and lose interest and don't and not finish them. And so rather than be like, well, I got to stop that. I now had to make that part of my system of just knowing that, hey, like you, you really think this is a great idea. Let's try this. Let's move it along. Let's see if you like it. And before you fully commit to it and, and pull back from it, if you don't, and then build your life in a way that allows you to be flexible in the things that you choose to chase, that the stakes of them can be reduced where you can scratch that itch to, to, to try something innovative to try something new, chase a new energy without necessarily needing to, to follow it through to completion, knowing that that's sort of part of your process. It was just understanding it rather than doing these things and then getting people super deeply involved and misleading their expectations. And then, then them being all excited to push it to completion and then me lose interest in it. And then it get all awkward because I don't want to talk about it and try to give them another job to work on. And like, like that was really what I was doing at the time, creating chaos in, in sort of the, the way that I was managing everything. But, but again, you know, even hearing that and reading that out loud and, and, and the, the assessment um, is much more complex than that. And it gives you so many different aspects of who you are and where the believability is, is when you read that, you're like, man, that's exactly me. And, and it's really now the first time that you're reading the truth about yourself. And the truth about yourself is so hard to see when it's, when it's mixed between all these desires and wants and needs and lack of clarity and complete understanding of what you're doing or why you're doing it, where you're just trying to, to make something work, hoping that it presents itself to you. And then it all settles down and gets clear. Like it's that, that way of, of not understanding yourself and no one, you know, is going to be able to say that about you. Tell me about me, good friend, best friend, girlfriend, wife, mother, father, because you know where they're going. I'm going straight to your weaknesses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, go out and take 20 personality tests, any type of test that there are to give you feedback about who you are before you ever ask somebody close to you. Because all they're going to do is take the opportunity to hit you with all the things that they think you're bad at. That's it. You know what I mean? And then they'll hit you with one solid good one. And you're, you're a good person. You're a good person. <laughs> Don't rely on friends, family, or even anybody close to you to give you insight uh, into who you are. Take the time, effort, and energy to take a bunch of different types of these tests just to be able to make that assessment yourself. Get the information, understand what connects with you and what you can do to apply it and make yourself better. You know, it goes on to say he's an enthusiastic innovator who is dynamic, assertive, and interested in success and the success and the status that it can bring. He prefers to improvise on the spot and get started right away instead of preparing and planning ahead. He values inspiration above all else and constantly strives to turn his original ideas into reality, a reality that may not seem real for others. And, and when you hear that, you know, you think, well, well, that's Rob. 
that's how that's why he's been able to do all these different things and 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 like been able to push through all these different projects and when you think about even he prefers to improvise you know it's why i freestyle this show it's why I freestyle ridiculousness. It's why I, you know, work really well when I have a sound structure because I can improvise inside a great structure, but but still have trouble putting in the time and energy on the planning side to make it easier and trust in my ability to go out and just give it all I got and get close, you know? And you see all of that and you understand all of that. And, and when you think about his its inspiration above all else uh, and and strives to turn these ideas into reality, it's it's making so much sense to who I am and what I do and why I've been able to 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 have the success that I've had. But when you read, uh, which may not seem real to others, is where I've had to slow down again and get the insight of like, man – you, you've got to be able to articulate what is in your mind and the reality you see in the future uh, in a way that others that you need to actually help get you there understand it. Like you can't just keep running over people and just saying, no, just trust me. This is what it looks like. This is how it is. Like I had to stop continuously just trying to you know, give my vague vision to someone that like, to me, that was incredibly clear. And then, um, and then assume that they understand it. And if they don't just push forward and hope that they figure it out along the way or expect them to figure it out along the way. And, and again, just, um, just these, these insights that just shaped how I communicated and how I thought about myself as it related to the stuff that I wanted to do and achieve, what was hindering me, what were the positive sides, what was, what was slowing me down or potentially stopping me, it, just in an effort to understand me better, to communicate better, to, to ultimately achieve what I had a vision for in the first place. You know, another another thing that's um, was said in that insights one is he's a he's a smooth talking persuader. You know what I mean? Because you know, I, and, and that I will argue both sides uh, based off of what outcome I want. I can have a strong opinion on two different sides, and that one hit me like a ton of bricks because it's like, man, sometimes I. I will just argue the other side just to argue the other side. And it's like, I remember thinking to myself, like, man, that is like literally the worst trait. That's your worst trait. Because then like now, even though you, you, someone's challenging you and you, you believe in their, the way they've challenged you and the idea, you'll argue super intently, dynamically and articulately against it. And even though you know their direction was really even where you want to go, you would convince them that's the wrong direction because you have the ability to argue the other side because you're, you, you just don't feel like saying yes to them. What a ter- what a, what an odd, terrible trait to have. I basically have had to just like learn to completely stop that. And I have over the years where it's just, and, and occasionally it'll slip back in. You know, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I think about like when it's a gray area where I could go either way, um, I will then argue against the other side in, in an effort to try to understand what direction I do want to go. Uh, but, but, you know, 10 years ago, I would just do it to do it. You know, I would just do it to be like, well, no, you could actually do this. And it, and it says, sometimes he is so intent on his own plans that he does not s- stop to listen to what others have to say. With his boldness and abundant energy, he may get the impression that it's significantly more important. The task itself is significantly more important than the people involved. And, it, and again, it's just a sentence and an assessment And it just changed me like reading all of that together was like, man, it was just saying like, hey, validating my entrepreneurialism, my ambition, my vision, my ability to see further into the future. All of these things that that are are validating to the type of person that I was, but then 
the blind spot was how being like that can actually affect all of the people around you that you need to realize the vision, you know? And, and again, I just got better and better at, at understanding those things, hearing those things when I was doing them and, and over time doing them less and less, knowing that that is sort of my natural flow, right? And, and when you get hit with Rob's strengths, what's Rob's strengths? Motivates others to, quote, achieve the impossible, right? A strong worth it, a work ethic, enjoys a challenge, sees innovation as a necessity, brave, daring, bold, swift, agile, creative, future-oriented, visionary, original, inventive thinker, highly resourceful, excellent communication and presentation skills. Feeling good. I'm feeling good about myself feeling good about myself. Now it's, it's validating like the things that I felt about myself, because what, what do you as, as a ambitious, hardworking, successful person, man, you, you spend so much time, you know, growing confidence and building belief in yourself that, that these type of things become part of who you are and, it, and it's validating. But when you look at Rob's weaknesses he takes leaps into the unknown and may ask other others to take these leaps into the unknown without explanation, has difficulty delegating, likes to do it himself, takes too many unjustified risks, dislikes and avoids routine tasks, loses interest when the initial challenge is gone, protects his ego against all comers, rocks the boat by challenging convention just for the sake of it, may not dot all the I's and cross the T's, becomes impatient with routine and repetition and makes decisions hastily. And I know to everybody is like, well, that's not you. You're the systems guy. You're the automate, design, automate, optimize guy. This can't be you. And I'm telling you that reading those weaknesses is what drove me into the discovery of like how, hey, like I need to gamify uh, routine. I need to to turn it into um, a, a more systematic approach and tie it to a purpose in order for me to do it. Because the reason I struggled with all of those things and, you know, the reason that I was constantly taking leaps into the unknown and, and trying to do everything myself and, you know, constantly taking unjustified risk. That's why I had to completely design the machine method and, and my process for building companies. Otherwise I just get excited by an idea. Let's just do it. And I would like end up, you know, having struggles or it not working and then be like, Oh, why did that happen? Like, Oh, I shouldn't have put all that money. It was just constantly that. So I had to build the system that protected me from me. And then I ultimately had to build the life system the same way that protected me from this sort of natural way of being that were my weaknesses. You know, that that's really what led to me understanding what are all the things that you need to build to support and 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 help defend yourself against your natural weaknesses and and then lean in and amplify your strengths. Right. And and. It's the life that I have today is because of this assessment, because I, 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 it was the first time that I really, really began to understand, um, who I was and what made me up and what did I need to do to become the best version of myself. And that was figure out ways to, to mitigate the weaknesses and lean into the strengths. And, and you can't do that unless you have some sort of, um, you know, data point or somebody or something in the case of a test like this to help you see yourself from that position. And it, and it will, it will absolutely and completely change your life. And I just think that, you know, throughout my life, I take as many as I can on an ongoing basis. And you're, you're just trying to create the awareness so that you understand yourself on a higher level to make a better version of yourself. 
right? And and recently I took one. I was, you know, I was so curious about how my mind worked. Okay, I can compartmentalize and I but I still like it, you know, move from thing to thing to thing. Like, you know, some things I'll procrastinate on, some things like I'll work on 20 things at once, like you know, is there some sort of test for my mind? And I, I ended up finding a, a, a test that's called um, Project Evo, which is what type of brain brain type you have. And, you know, I ended up with what they call a alchemist uh, type of brain. And in this particular like assessment test that told me discovering instant interesting patterns across multiple contexts. You have the ability to zoom out uh, from specific context you're in and see things at a high level. You can observe patterns across multiple contexts where others see limited ideas and thoughts in common. Don't reduce yourself to working exclusively in a single narrow row or field as this reduces your ability to see patterns. And it was like, man, you know, it's so true to exactly the way that I view my everything and how I see like, you know, how the machine integrates into my life and how the philosophy integrates into my work and, and my life and, and everything. And what does it look like in the future? And how is everything that I do integrate together and creating a single sort of story? It, all of that way of thinking is allowing me to even be in a position to where I'm, uh, being able to create this philosophy in the first place, right? And it's it's incredibly interesting because what it also tells me is like, hey, like you have to continually master how to keep all of um, these different things going on an ongoing basis and make sure that they all serve a singular purpose and know that you can you have to limit how many you take on at once. You have to understand that aspect of yourself because that's where you're only going to get caught up is when you end up trying to have too many things and then you have too many and now you're overwhelmed. You're, you're out of capacity as I talk about it. It just, again, giving me further insight to what in the way that I think and, and a lot that I've already under, understood about myself but continuing to validate it. It says your superpowers, creative problem solving. You see nearly all problems uh, you face as interesting challenges. Um, You may view a challenge to automate them or make them more fun so you have time to focus on things that matter to you. What? What? That, you know, it described exactly the process that I went through to develop even this entire concept of continually to automate things, to make them more energy neutral and gamify them, to make them more interesting to you, even though they may be hard and difficult. You know, um, it, it, it again, just validating this continual evolution of who I actually am and, and the way that I think. And of course, the weakness getting bored and and distracted easily when there's a lack of variety of pursuing fresh ideas and and you probably have a hard time keeping your hands out of all the pies because everywhere you look you see possibilities for something new and better and again it is like every test that same sort of theme keeps coming back and it's undeniable. And rather than, than trying to change who I am, it's having the awareness and understanding of who I am so that I can now apply um, this understanding of myself to, to protect myself from myself. At the end of the day, it's just getting the information and knowing what your weaknesses are and creating systems and solutions around allowing you to thrive and be the best version of yourself and do the things that you need to do, a variety of different things on an ongoing basis, but build everything in a way around that to make sure you don't end up doing too many and then lose focus or... Um, become overwhelmed and not be able to do anything at all.
right? Like it, it is the value of these different assessments that just is this deeper insight that has allowed me to continue to evolve. And I really just wanted everybody to hear, to hear my view of them a little bit more deeper rather than I always kind of talk about how important it is, like go out and do it. But I, I wanted to give you context on what I learned about myself and then how I applied it because I really do think uh, everybody should go out and take is, is these tests on an ongoing basis. Just there, you know, look for brain tests and personality tests and work tests, like all of them are worth taking 15, 20 minutes to do and then just reading through uh, and understanding yourself further to continually uh, figure out ways to be more efficient and better at strategizing how to become the better version of yourself because that's all it's about. That's all we're doing down here. Getting better every day in every way. It's the machine way. Uh, Yeah, it's too far too far we don't have a machine way we don't have a machine way appreciate you always uh being a part of the show listening to it thankful for every single one of you like and subscribe wherever you listen to the show and you know what you got to do you got to always be looking out in the future you always got to be strategizing you always got to be working until next time see it believe it do it